John and Jim, the lineup cards are being exchanged now at home plate. For the moment, Steven Strasburg is in the Nationals' dugout. What are his teammates looking for? They know he has talent, but in terms of his demeanor, what are they looking for? Well, they're all looking for doing whatever they can to help him get through this game, and then they're going to look for signs that might, you know, third baseman Zimmerman come, come over and calm him down. But I think they're anxious and, and really looking forward to this start as well as everybody in the stands. And when you know that he's getting ready to do something that each player in that that field has done you feel for him and so you have compassion and you just try to do your part yeah and I think Bob we, we talked about it a bit in the open I, what I'm really I mean I can't imagine being in his shoes with this kind of pressure and my thought would be can I take a nice light grip on the ball find a cruising speed speed for my fastball nice easy motion and just establish throwing strikes in the first inning that's going to be key for him. There are many ways to measure this but this game sold out within two hours of the announcement that this would be Steven Strasburg's major league debut. Strasburg merchandise has long been among the best selling in the major leagues and certainly the best selling of all nationals items including Ryan Zimmerman for a long time ever since they drafted in number one in last year's draft. A Strasburg baseball card sold for almost seventeen thousand dollars on eBay this week and here's the topper. There's a town named Strasburg in Virginia in the Shenandoah Valley about eighty five miles west of this ballpark Strasburg Virginia population sixty two hundred the mayor announced this week that they want to give Stephen the pride of Strasburg award and if he personally goes to the Shenandoah Valley to accept it they promise to rename the town Steven Strasburg for a week. <laughs> oh wow. <laughs> Did the old Washington Senators offer you anything like that when you came no, up from they, Chattanooga uh, no, in 1959. They gave me a pair of spikes and said kid you're facing Louis Aparicio in game two go get him. <laughs> well here's something you understand that it's the history of Washington baseball because you got in on the tail end of it before the old senators became the Minnesota Twins then were replaced immediately by an expansion team also named the senators that eventually left in the early 70s to become the Texas Rangers. But you know how long suffering baseball fans have been in this town the old saying going back almost 100 years right. Washington first in war first in peace and last in the American League now they're last in the National League East but you get the idea. Oh sure and, and just to put an exclamation point on when I joined the club I was the losing pitcher in the 17th consecutive loss for the Senators. No Washington based team has had a winning record since the Ted Williams managed Senators of 1969. The plate umpire is Tom Hallion. The leadoff hitter is Andrew McCutcheon. Ball one at 97 miles an hour and the ball authenticated by Major League Baseball taken out of play and on its way either to the nearby Smithsonian or perhaps to Cooperstown. Two and up. Oh. Strasburg with a deep breath but working quickly. And that is lined right to shortstop where it's grabbed by Ian Desmond hit like a bullet but right at Desmond for the first out. And right there you don't care what happens as he, he lines this ball to short you don't care if it's a deep fly ball you just want that first out you can relax and get back to the you know the basics of pitching because there's all kinds of anxiety and anxious moments to not only a throw your first pitch but get your first out. And here now the switch hitting second baseman Neil Walker shows bump takes a curve that missed. Let me tell you something the, uh, the, na the National League umpires and umpires all along I know they're not National League American they're going to have a hard, hard time calling that pitch for a strike it is so big and breaks so hard that pitch bro broke right down the middle of the plate and look at all accounts was a strike and he didn't get the pitch two seamer at ninety eight dips low. Hallion is the crew chief, veteran umpire, Ron Culpa at first, Lance Barksdale at second, Ed Rapawano calls the plays at third. Back 
That'll make the seats. And a quick look at the Pirate lineup. Talking with some of the Pirates and their manager John Russell, they say they're excited to be part of this game tonight, seen as bit players. Oh yeah, by the way, the starting pitcher is Jeff Karstens, who hopes to be something more than a footnote tonight. Down and away, three and one. Fastball on the ground to Dunn at first for the second out. The first two hitters have hit the ball sharply. Well, that would be an indication. I think John would agree that when he gets relaxed and grips it a little lighter, doesn't tend to squeeze it, you're going to get more movement, more late life. If they're hitting line drives off him, that means that movement is not there along with the speed. And it's a feel out process is you know he's throwing a lot of two seamers they're going to have to remind him hey you got a four seamer that you can ride up in the zone and throw it at 98 99 miles an hour and that's going to be a good pitch as well. That one at 99 gets the inside corner. To the former Met and National Lastings Millage. Curveball knee bender for strike two. Yeah, and that wasn't really as good, one, was it? I mean, that kind of was high in the zone. It had a great break, but you saw how Millage gave down. They come to their feet in anticipation of the 0-2 pitch, and that ends the inning with the changeup. Down in order go the Bucks. A 1-2-3 first in the first major league game for Steven Strasburg. Standing room only crowd did not show up tonight to see Jeff Karsten's pitch. On the other hand, the opposing team must have a starting pitcher. It's a league rule. And Karsten's first offering to Guzman is a called strike. Karsten's is one and one. His ERA is 4.78. This one is slapped to the left side. LaRoche was playing in close, and he throws Guzman out. Here's the chasing starting lineup for the Nationals. Nadina and Desmond, both rookies. Zimmerman, their best player, third in the league in slugging, just entering what should be the prime of his career. They have a good young core on this team, presently six back of Atlanta in the National League East and in the basement, but with some bright future prospects, near future prospects. Strike one to Niger Morgan, their center fielder. Just to give you a perspective, 91 miles an hour fastball is no slouch, but that's uh, the opposing pitcher's changeup. At shortstop, Ronnie Cedeno. Two quick outs in the bottom of the first. There's Jeff Carson, probably the most relaxed guy in the ballpark, and this is nothing new to him. There you see his numbers in 10 games. Drafted originally as a catcher. Good arm, didn't hit much. Yankees finally drafted him as a pitcher. That's where he got his first major league win as a 23-year-old. He's about to be 28. Picked out of the back of the Yankee rotation briefly in 07. Where he posted a mark of seven and three. Ryan Zimmerman at 306 with 11 homers, third in the league in slugging behind the Reds' Scott Rowland and the Cardinals' Albert Pujols. High drive, deep right center field. And this ball is out of here. Over the scoreboard and gone for the 12th homer of the year for Zimmerman. Ryan Zimmerman gives Steven Strasburg an early 1 0 edge. You asked earlier, Bob, what can the teammates do or what are they looking for? Right there is one of the best gifts you could ever give. A starting pitcher making his debut. Get him a lead. Add on. Let him feel comfortable on the mound. And uh, certainly that's a that's a nice present as he's slapping high fives with everybody. Adam Dunn with 10 homers of his own this year. 
Adam Dunn hit 46 home runs in 2004, then hit exactly 40 on the button the next four years running. 05 through 08. Check swing out in front of the plate. That's a fair ball. And that's the third out. But the homer by Zimmerman breaks the ice early. It's 1 0 Nationals after one in D.C. On to the second for Steven Strasburg after a 1 2 3 first. Garrett Jones will start it off. Down and into him. Significant home run threat, eight this year. Hit 21 and just over 300 at bats after July call up in 09. That one dips low at 98 miles per hour, 2 and 0 to count. This will show up as a strike in the old ZE format a day later. 3 0 now. He hasn't hit triple digits yet. He's capable of it, but he has been around 97, 98, 99 through the first inning plus. That one's in there at 97. But John mentioned that'll show up as a strike. See, with that heavy sinker from that center field camera, you see the Pudge Rodriguez catch it appears to be low. But when it crossed the plate, it hit the knees. That's the trouble the sinker ball has getting called strike. Comes back to run the count full, being caught tonight in his debut by the man who has caught more games than anyone in the history of Major League Baseball, Pudge Rodriguez, just off the disabled list in time for tonight's game. 13 time Gold Glover. And down goes Jones for the second strikeout put in the book tonight by Strasburg. If you want to know why the hype and everybody being magnified 3 and 0 and he comes back with three straight fastballs saying go ahead and hit it and he's going to realize he can get away with a lot of this with a lot of hitters but he cannot live by the 2 and 0 3 and 0 3 and 1 count all the time but that's what he possesses that kind of electric fastball the hitter knows he's throwing it the catcher everyone in the park knows he's throwing it and they couldn't catch up to it and here's the thing perhaps the obvious thing it's one thing to be effective but there's a mystique about the flamethrower. Johnson, Feller, Nolan Ryan, whomever you want to name, Randy Johnson. When you can intimidate, when you have the possibility, Roger Clemens of striking out 15, 16, 17 a night, of throwing a no hitter every time you take the ball, that's a whole different thing from a fan perspective. There were guys who had better one loss percentages than Nolan Ryan. Nobody made the turnstiles click like Nolan Ryan. The right fielder Delwyn Young fouls the 1 1 pitch out of play. Yeah, I would say an analogy I would look at is Greg Maddox achieved more than Nolan Ryan. People didn't come out to see Greg pitch a no hitter, they just knew he was very effective. And that's in today's game, Mike Leak, who's 5 0 versus Strasburg, the attraction of the power fastball and the strikeout. And the 1 2. There's your that hit 100. Yep. yep, there you go. And the crowd reacts to it. Breaking ball finishes him for his third consecutive strikeout. People are looking for similarities or what's the cross reference who can you put together is it a Roger Clemens Kerry Wood. This is a more like Kerry Wood type curveball. It is so hard and breaks so hard fast that the hitter has no chance to react and you see Pudge diving just to catch it. This is the kind of curveball that's going to get a lot of swing and misses in this game. He got lasting's millage with a slow curve to end the first. Jones with the fastball. There's another breaking ball in for a strike to Andy LaRoche. Jones with a fastball to start the second. And then Delwyn Young with a sharper breaking curveball for his third straight strikeout. A ball and a strike. Well, you can tell when he gets behind 3 0 or 2 0, his mechanics get a little looser, to your point, Jim. I'm sure he relaxes to be able to throw a strike thinking the hitter's going to take. But he has simple mechanics and delivers with such a force that the ball shows. And there is the first base hit 
that Steven Strasburg yields in the major leagues. Opposite field single by Andy LaRoche. Since there is a possibility, if everything pans out on the upside, that Steven Strasburg will be the most significant pitcher to wear a Washington uniform since Walter Johnson, it might be noted that Andy LaRoche got the first hit off Strasburg. The first hit Walter Johnson ever yielded in the big leagues was a single to Ty Cobb. Wow. Pretty good company. Well, I think John referred to this earlier is that the four seam fastball and again for you fans the four seam is the fastball that rides high the two seam is the sinker. And chances are that pitch that Roach hit was a sinker a two seamer maybe about bell tie that's where the four seam fastballs eventually going to be a better weapon for him. That's just not fair. Ronnie Cedeno is up there saying what <laughs> what. You look at this pitch right here it's in the strike zone the whole way and ends up way out of the strike zone a hitter does not have that much time with a guy who throws 99 miles an hour to make up his mind anyways he's trying to see it and hit it the 0 2 and he gets a piece and stays alive Steve McCabe the pitching coach told us that Strasburg's two seamer with that sinking action is good enough that he could win a game throwing only that he's got the four seamer he's got the curveball he's got the change and he apparently has command of all of them even at this early stage of his career. That is some arsenal. Hudge with the sign. From the set Strasburg. Bounces one up there. And see what I'm going to like to see is the is the maturity and the progress of a pitcher is he can live up in the zone and when I say up in the zone not everybody can throw fastballs belt high and get away with it but it's going to make his curveball which you're seeing has a tilt. 12 to 6 so much more effective because a guy who throws low fastballs with that curveball you're, you're not going to get as many swings and misses but if you're in the strike zone you can throw what's coined a hanger and get away with it because those guys are going to buckle out of the way. And Cedeno asked for time. I think that would be a great diamond demo for Barry Larkin some of the guys back in the studio to explain from a hitter's standpoint how that four seam high fastball is so effective with a devastating hook. Runner going. He can slow up because Strasburg struck out the side. And he showed his entire repertoire to the Pirates who just flailed at it for the most part of the second. Willingham Rodriguez and Bernardina in the bottom of the second with the Nationals up 1 nothing. The home run by Ryan Zimmerman is a subplot. The main arc of the story four strikeouts through two for Steven Strasburg. And strike one from Jeff Karstens. Talk about a contrast. Karstens' career record is 10 and 18. His career ERA is upwards of five. Doesn't throw hard at all, but generally has good command. Doesn't walk a lot of people. This ball is hit in the air to left, backing up his lasting's millage, not quite to the track, and at the edge of the track. He takes it. And here is the defense for the Pirates behind Karstens. Around the infield, LaRoche, Sedeno, Walker, and Jones with Jaramillo behind the plate. In the outfield, you saw Millage make that catch, and Andrew McCutcheon in center, and Delvin Young in right. 38 year old Ivan Rodriguez, future Hall of Famer, catching Steven Strasburg tonight. He was signed by the Texas Rangers a week after Strasburg was born in July of 1988. And he's been behind the plate for more games than anyone in the history of the game. This is his 2321st game behind the plate in the major leagues. Hit over the bag, fair down the line. Possible extra bases. Rodriguez around first. Digging for second. Millage having trouble with it. Big turn by Rodriguez, but he'll hold with a one out double. Now Pudge known more as a guy that goes to right field, but there he got a hang and breaking ball that he could get the head of the bat out and pull it down the line for a double. Nice effort by LaRoche. Couldn't reach it. 
And one of the things besides his offense, which has already been good this year, is his experience behind the plate, as you said, Bob. He's caught 116 different starters, and he's really going to help Steven navigate through a game, which is a blessing to have a young guy make his major league debut with such a veteran catcher. Roger Bernardina takes a breaking ball for a strike. He's from Curacao in the Netherlands Antilles. Curacao being the homeland of your old teammate Andrew Jones with the Braves. They've been producing for not a big island. They've been producing some, uh, some major league players. Fastball tapped foul. Baseball becoming such a global game and Bernardino uh, I was just over there in Amsterdam visiting he's a product of the Netherlands baseball program run by former Yankee Robert Einhorn by far the best European team. Jared Jurgens also mm -hmm. from around there. One out one on in the 0 2 pitch wasted high and away. Prior to that the Yankees had uh, Hensley Bam Bam Ewings also a product of that uh, area. Two and two. You can almost sense the crowd. They, they're really not that interested in what's happening right now. They can't wait for Strasburg to get back out there. Well, the Nationals are in last place. Only the Astros are keeping the Pirates out of the basement in the central. For the moment, this is all about Strasburg. Bouncing ball to the right side. Jones to Carson's covering. Rodriguez to third with two down. Well, it also has the closest makings to a guy I followed my whole upbringing in Detroit. When Mark Fitterich used to pitch. Not only did they come out to watch him pitch, but they would wait the entire time after he'd do his interview ice, and then he would come back out 20 minutes later to give a curtain call. Not saying that Steven's going to do that yeah. in today's age, but well, it has the makings of them coming out to watch him pitch. Unfortunately, like, like the bird who could pitch nine innings and do that, in these days and times, pitchers aren't allowed to do that. It would be a pitch count. He was some fun to watch. And from all reports, Steven Strasburg doesn't talk to the ball on no. the mound as Fidrich did. Desmond, the shortstop. You know, I mentioned I have yet to get a ball as a broadcaster. I, I highly doubt we're going to get one here in Washington. Seven stories. Yeah. Up. yeah. So no one, no one cares <laughs> about our problems, but this is our first broadcast from this location. This is the steepest angle from which I have ever broadcast any sport. We're it's about like, seven stories up. We're in the blimp. Yeah, that's <laughs> like doing a game from the blimp. That's the kind of view you have. There you have hey, it. how are you? <laughs> Good to see you. We're up here somewhere. The 1-1. One, one. Check swing foul. So when Ryan Zimmerman hit his opposite field homer in the first, I'm saying to myself as it leaves the bat, this looks like it might go out, but I'm not sure until Andrew McCutcheon gave up chasing it. It's a whole new perspective on angles, especially when I we've spent most of our career in the dugout where the angles are pretty self-explanatory. From up here, the game's a rumor. <laughs> Karsten's one-two pitch runs inside, two and two. I would imagine with uh, Desmond being their best clutch hitter in the parking place over there at first, and the pitcher coming up next, that he's going to try to make him chase something here. Breaking ball hit on the ground is short. Sedeno guns him out. Strasburg back to the mound. He'll be the leadoff hitter in the bottom half of the upcoming inning. It's 1 0 Nats after two. With a single by Andy LaRoche mixed in, Steven Strasburg has fanned four of the last five hitters he's faced. Well, he's got great mechanics, and the, every pitch that he throws comes from the same spot. He uses leverage with his long arm and his frame, and just really delivers the ball with explosive stuff, Jim. And I think it's going to be fun to watch him mature as these mechanics don't change or didn't cause much problems for him to, to locate. I think what's impressive to me, just the first couple innings, is that he's throwing all of his pitches for strikes. I really look for him to just kind of be a fastball pitcher early in the game, but he's he's got everything working. 
Switch hitting catcher Jason Jaramillo. Take strike one. 30 pitches for Strasburg through two. That was his 31st. His limit tonight is right around 90. No matter how well he's doing. His innings limit for the season is between 150 and 160 counting what he brought to the uh, Nationals from the minor leagues. He threw 55 minor league innings. Yeah it's kind of a shame that pitchers are limited like that. I don't know who does or how they go about getting the research to come up with those numbers but it is what we live with in today's game. Curveball got him looking. Number five. Well, if you've heard the expression in baseball, the back door curve, see where Pudge wanted it was inside, but it had a nice sharp break, and I think he got a nice generous call from Tom Hallion, the home plate umpire. It might have broke around the plate, but where Pudge caught it and framed it, got the called strike. And as you can see, the strike out call of Mr. Hallion, if he faces or calls too many of these games, he's going to need a chiropractor because it looks like <laughs> Stevens got the ability to strike a lot of people out. Rare do you see, rarely do you see the umpire's back when yeah. he's making a strikeout <laughs> right. call. Karsten's two for nine against other pitchers this season. He's in an 0 2 hole here. And that's bad etiquette right there. I, what I mean by that is tongue in cheek. Yeah. He's facing the other pitcher, and the other pitcher's going, You throw 99 miles an hour, and you're going to throw that stuff to me? Did he go? Yeah, that's he did not. That's not really uh, the pitcher's code of ethics, right, John? No, you it's got, not. You got to at least give him a fastball to hit with that kind of arson. You see, Carson just barely held up anything in the strike zone. He'll have a tough time making contact. Now he's done. Six of the last seven have fanned. He struck out Millage to end the first. He struck out the side in the second. He spanned the first two in the third. And this is what we kind of talked about. This is kind of the stuff with that fastball riding up and his curveball and changeup. Jim, to your point, he's really let off every hitter, or at least through the lineup one time, he's let off hitters with different first pitches, which is a credit to Pudge calling the game and not necessarily just sitting back rocket firing and seeing what happens. McCutcheon lined hard to Desmond at short to start the game. Yeah and I think that's what is setting him apart at least in advance with the hype is that Bob you mentioned Bob Feller Tom Seaver Nolan Ryan Roger Clemens chopped to third Zimmerman juggles it recovers pulls done off but he applies the tag to McCutcheon and that takes care of the Pirates in the top of the third Strasburg is the leadoff hitter in the bottom half Zimmerman with the play here his homer earlier gave the Nats their one nothing lead. This MLB Network special is fueled by Subway with Jim Cott and John Smoltz. Bob Costas as we go to the third. Strasburg is the hitter and we're told he's a pretty good hitter. I spoke with Tony Gwynn, his college coach at San Diego State yesterday. Asked him about Strasburg as a hitter. He said he's such a good athlete, I know he can hit. And he was always on me to let him hit. But with the DH in the collegiate ranks, I, meaning Gwynn, just simply did not want to give the other team a shot at him. He was our star. I didn't want him standing up there and have the possibility that he'd be thrown at. But Strasburg fields his position well. He holds runners when they manage to reach against him, holds runners well. Two and two. Makes contact, rolls it toward the hole. From the grass, Sedeno's whirling throw gets him. Probably just as well from Jim Riggleman and Steve McCaddy's perspective that Strasburg doesn't have to run the bases here. Yeah, he didn't smell base hit or he'd have been no. legging it off. Boy, he, I think he thought that was a routine ground out. It took a bad hop. You see him out of the box as well. Yeah. Might have got his first big league hit there. He doesn't even have to bust it. If he goes at three quarter speed, he's safe there. Yeah. You have a problem with that, John? No, no. I, I think uh, every manager knows that the one thing they, they they give the exception to is the pitcher. 
Last thing you want him doing is pulling something, but uh, I'm with Jim. I think he thought that was routine yeah. or he would have. See, there, there is a difference there when I mentioned Mike Leak, the other number one draft phenom. Guzman lost one to center. McCutcheon is there. Leak is a baseball player that just happens to be a pitcher. He doesn't have the power stuff of Strasburg, but he'd have been past first base on that one. I think because Steven doesn't hit very often, he just kind of assumed that that was a uh, routine ground ball. Now, I know he had that injury back in the instruction league that didn't require any surgery with the patella in his knee. But he'll learn. He'll learn when yeah. to do it, when not oh, to do yeah. it. Oh, well, yeah. When you're a pitcher, you love those base hits. Sure. You can smell you're going to get one, you want to leg it out. A ball and a strike to Niger Morgan who grounded out his first time up. Two quick outs in the home half of the third. And that one gets by Walker and into right field for a base hit. I imagine that's how they'll score it, although it was playable. Looks like it hit the lip. He was in between there as he was trying to get a fast runner. We'll see here as he pulls it to the right side of the infield. Fast runner. Right around the lip area. Yep. Lip of the infield. Has to be a hit. And now Morgan, who has stolen 12 bases, but also has been caught nine times, is aboard with two out. Here's Zimmerman, who homered to right center in the first. Shot of Neil Walker. His dad's in the stands tonight. A former big leaguer pitcher, Tom Walker. Closer this time. It's going to be a tremendous battle over the years in the National League between these two third basemen of Zimmerman and Wright. Two of the class of uh, you could flip a coin each year probably and have a representation in the All Star game. But Ryan Zimmerman is so important to the Washington Nationals as they try to pursue some winning seasons and, and possibly some playoff baseball. He went through a, a tough period there where he was having trouble with throwing it to first base. Seems to have conquered that. He's played excellent defense. Although their defense has cost them in the last 11 games, giving up uh, somewhere in the neighborhood of 18 unearned runs. Finally, Carstens comes to the plate and a called strike with the Nationals drafting Bryce Harper yesterday. Highly regarded catcher whom they plan to convert to an outfielder. With Strasburg in place, with this guy Zimmerman, with Harper on his way, those are cornerstones for a young franchise that could be a contender in the near future. Morgan is not going. Well, Bob you and I have mentioned one of Whitey Herzog's lines before where he said we're just two players from winning the pennant Ruth and Koufax. And in Washington's case they've got two pretty good prospects in Strasburg and Harper. Well the draft can be dicey especially in baseball. But in the case of Strasburg and Harper each a Scott Boris client. They are viewed as can't miss. And as somebody in Washington put it, the Nationals picked a good time to be lousy. Yeah. Because it put them in position not just to draft number one, but to draft number one when the best player was clear in each case. I looked at the first uh, five selections in this year's draft. Well, the team they're playing wishes they could be in this position someday soon too. Pittsburgh they've had their share of consecutive losing seasons where they've drafted a lot of players and a lot of players have been around a lot of other teams once they've gotten pretty good so they, they took they took Jamison Tyon young Texas high schooler big right hander with their first pick the Pirates are on their way to their 18th consecutive losing season which means they've had a lot of high draft choices with mixed results at best. In fact as Tom Verducci points out 
in this week's Sports Illustrated. Over the course of the last decade or so, these players have been available when the Pirates selected. David Wright, B.J. Upton, Zach Greinke, Prince Fielder, Aaron Hill, Stephen Drew, Phil Hughes, Clayton Kershaw, Tim Lincecum, Jason Hayward, all available when the Bucks' choice came up. Hit sharply to short. Cedeno plays it with his chest, but has time to recover and get the force. Of course, in fairness to the Pirates, a small market team often has to make a decision about whether a high draft choice is signable or not. It's not just player evaluation. One nothing after three. For the record, here's the defense behind Steven Strasburg tonight. Zimmerman, Desmond, Guzman, and Dunn. Pudge, we mentioned behind the plate, Willingham. Morgan and Bernadina in the outfield. The rookie Neil Walker, who replaced Aki Iwamura at second base earlier this season, punches one foul. Yeah, I, I began, I started to mention him, Steven Strasburg got that three out, third out so quickly. What sets him apart, I think, from Feller, Clemens, Seaver, Ryan, they all had great fastballs and a breaking pitch. This kid has three that appear to be put away pitches, pitches that you could strike a hitter out with. Curveball off the outside edge. Now it needs to be said, just for sanity's sake, that there have been many so so seasons and so so careers that had great debuts. There have been Hall of Fame careers that had lousy debuts. This is one baseball game. And this one will drop for a base hit, a leadoff hit in the fourth for Neil Walker. On the other hand, just about every baseball man, just about every knowledgeable observer says, that if Strasburg stays healthy and with young pitchers that is always a question many highly touted pitchers have gone down in flames with arm problems including many of the most notable in recent years Ben McDonald Kerry Wood Mark Pryor but nonetheless if this guy reaches his upside he's not just a potential Hall of Famer he's a potentially historic player. Lasting's Millage takes low. John and I were talking uh, during the break and you mentioned if he stays healthy and the best young pitcher I saw come up that was John's teammate that had three pitches like that Steve Avery he won 100 games before Warren Spahn won his first but arm injuries cut his career short. He was pretty polished and remember it like it was yesterday. And once he had the little shoulder problem, it became difficult for him to try and come back with the arm action that he had. But boy, I don't think anybody has pitched two greater playoff games back to back than yeah. Steve Avery. Two one to nothing games against the Pirates, which gave me a chance to pitch game seven and ultimately us a chance to go to the World Series. This is Strasburg's 47th pitch tonight. And it's hit hard but foul. When I mentioned earlier that Strasburg has a chance to be the most impactful pitcher to wear a Washington uniform be it Senators or Nationals since Walter Johnson that's a considered statement you look at everyone who has pitched for a usually woebegone franchise Johnson is at the top of the heap you could still make a case for him though it's difficult to compare eras so far back in history this ball was hit through the hole for a base hit so back to back singles Walker is going to stop at second back to back singles to start the fourth two on and nobody out but you can make a case for Walter Johnson as the greatest pitcher in the game's history more than 400 wins more than 100 shutouts for a long time before the game changed he was the all time strikeout leader. This and will be a, a challenge for him right here. You, John and I were talking about what a big league hitter go a pitcher goes through you know when somebody starts turning your best fastball around or hitting your best fastball you now you have to figure out a way to to mix up your pitches and get out of a jam. So he's got to go to work on Garrett Jones. Who was his second strikeout victim of the night to open the second inning. His first real big league jam and a swinging strike. It's a great first pitch on their arguably lead uh, RBI guy he comes at him with a change up. But I think the rut that if he gets in a rut it's going to be in talking to the pitching coach McCaddy and the, it's going to be as you said he can live with just a two seamer but that two seamer is not going to be always there 
to deliver the ground balls. They're gonna, he's actually going to do some of those guys a favor as you've seen them go the other way with hits. The hitters are going to use his power to their advantage. So to ride a ball up and to throw that curve ball and change up will be essential. Now right here, he's looking to get a strikeout. He can go anywhere in this quadrant to get that strikeout. Goes up and a bit too high. One and two. He just raised the eye level. He doesn't always have to go in and out as much as up and down because now he could throw a, a belt high curveball and get him to buck. Walker at second, Millage at first. Nobody out on the fourth. And Jones steps out. Action pitch here. Too many pitchers get ahead 0 and 2, and then they nibble, 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 get the count to three. Do you want to avoid that and make the hitter put it in play right here or strike him out? One of the two. Off the outside corner, full count. Pudge wanted it inside, and the breaking ball hung. Outside. Walker away from second. Millage off first. And the payoff to Jones. Broken bat up the middle. There's one. Quick turn. There's two. Here's a good example where the other pitches set up this pitch. A good two seamer away, and it just shatters the bat. Almost could have taken it himself, but they knew the runner was going. He makes a good turn, gets what could be out of a little bit of his first jam in the big leagues. Now he's got a chance to get out of it with no damage. Desmond to Guzman, who makes the pivot, and on to Dunn for the double play. So Walker now at third with two out. And it's up to Delwyn Young who fanned in the second. Ball one to him. Right field, well hit. Berardina backing up and looking up, and it's gone. And just like that, Strasburg is behind. Delwyn Young with his third homer of the year. And Nationals fans reject the souvenir, sending it back. This happens to be a changeup that he drops the head of the bat. Pretty darn good hitting right here. Change up over the middle. Look, he just drops the bat head on the ball, and the ball carries for a home run. I thought it was a good pitch selection when I saw the sign, but the ball got too much of the middle of the plate. He sure did. Preferred that down and away. And now Andy LaRoche pops one up. Guzman calls and takes it. But. Three hits in the inning. Luckily for Strasburg, a double play mixed in. A two run homer by Delwyn Young makes it 2 1 Pirates, middle of the fourth. On a gorgeous night in D.C., a look at upcoming nationally televised games on various outlets. As we go to the bottom of the fourth at Nationals Park, Dunn, Willingham, and Rodriguez to face Jeff Karstens. Karstens came in tonight knowing that short of a perfect game there was no way he could take his name from the agate type to the headlines it was all going to be about Strasburg but at the moment it's Karstens on the long end of a 2 1 score Adam Dunn rips one into right and it will drop for a hit that shift that they put on him is the most amazing shift by all accounts, the second baseman is 30 feet in front of the outfielder. Look, yeah, at, look that. at him. I mean, you got it to get a, a, a line drive over his head and before the outfielder is not easy. It's a Jim Tomey shift, but deeper. So Dunn working on the bubble gum, 
in a most attractive fashion is aboard to start the fourth. Willingham fly the left and is only at bat. Well he's been a nice productive player for him Josh Willingham the ex Marlin he's one of those hitters you watch for a while you can tell inside or outside conscious and if you leave a ball inside half of the plate early in the count he'll do some damage with it. Down at first no threat to run what he is a threat to do is hit the ball out of the park. I mentioned earlier he had 46 home runs back in 04. Then four consecutive seasons of exactly 40. The 1 1 to Willingham. And then last year Adam Dunn inexplicably began to show inconsistency. He hit 38 home runs. <laughs> 46, 40, 40, 40, 40, 38. Like a metronome. And now all over baseball, home runs are down, pitching is up. As Bill Madden pointed out in the New York Daily News this past Sunday, all of the top 10 ERA leaders in the American League, the DH League, had ERAs under three this week. Hit sharply to third. LaRoche on to second, but the throw to first gets away, and they get only the force. Nice job by Jaramillo backing up that play after the throw got away. Should have been a, a routine double play. Plenty of time for Walker at second, and I think he just jumped out of the way a little quick. And you'll see Jaramillo come into your picture. Willingham thought about heading for second. He made the attempt and then quickly looked behind him and had to hold his ground. Those are the little things that hurts you as a pitcher the double play that should have been turned if Karsten should yield a run or more here they'd be earned where in a, in a sense his defense has betrayed him here and that's the one rule I don't like where you can't assume a double play so therefore you can't give an error but clearly that was an, an error on somebody usually they give it to the guy that throws it in the dirt but in this case it was a turn of a double play so it just goes for not. Fouled off by Rodriguez, who doubled his first time off. He has more than 2,700 career hits, the most ever by a catcher. Pudge's strength uh, for all his years in the game in these situations has always been the ability to take it to right field. He's a good hit and run man if they'd like to stay out of the double play. The runner going broken back roller but right through the vacated spot and they're going to have runners at the corners. So you're Jeff Carstens. They don't turn the double play. Then they go with a hit and run. Rodriguez just reaches out and pokes it weakly. But nobody's there. Yeah, I'm kind of surprised they had the second baseman covering there because if they know Rodriguez's history, that's what he tries to do with the ball, men on base, man on first base. And I think they went with the pitch selection being one where he would probably roll over and be harder to hit a curveball the other way. And he just did a nice job, shortened up, and hit it as weakly as you can hit it, and still rewarded with a hit. Two on, one out. For Bernardina, who promptly laces it to left. Millage comes in and makes the catch. The runner tagging and coming to the plate. Close play. They got him. Wow, that's some throw. Willingham trying to score and trying to do it standing up. But Millage's throw cuts him down. As we return, strike one from Steven Strasburg to Ronnie Cedeno, who fanned in the second. On 
Strasburg's 58th pitch. It's a ball and a strike. Threw it right by him at 97. The little things on which games sometimes turn in the bottom of the fourth. The Pirates could not turn the easy double play in the middle of the inning. They did end the inning with a very difficult double play on the potential sacrifice fly. Millage to Jaramillo to cut down Willingham. And down goes Cedeno. That's seven strikeouts for Strasburg. And that's the example of that four seamer now coming to life. No two seamers this at bat. And it just says right there stays on plane on the outside half and you have to be an awfully good hitter to be able to put that in play and uh, you're going to see a little bit more of that as his starts start happening this year. Jaramillo called strike one at ninety nine. They say that Walter Johnson threw in the vicinity of a hundred miles an hour. Perhaps the first in the legendary line of flamethrowers. The Senators signed Walter Johnson who was pitching semi pro, pro ball in Idaho while he was also digging post holes for the Idaho Telephone Company signed him back in 1907 for a hundred dollar signing bonus. And 350 bucks a month. Even allowing for inflation, Steven Strasburg did better than that with Scott Boris as his representative. Roll toward first, Dunn has it and will take it himself. I think what, uh, what John noticed early on in this inning, and I think maybe Steve McCaddy, who told us they're going to encourage Strasburg to throw more of those four seamers in that last inning. They hit a couple sinkers that stayed up in the zone. So right. I, I think maybe what Steve said is hey use that four seamer as you said changes the eye level gets on the hitter a little bit quicker and it'll only make that two seamer even more effective. And, and I know both sides of it four seam fastball you're going to get more foul balls maybe add more pitches. I know they're trying to get an economy package but this guy right here to be successful and to dominate like he's going to in the postseason that four seam fastball is going to be number one. The two seamer is going to be the one that gets him out of trouble, not necessarily the one that he uses the majority of the game. In my opinion. I think one of the reasons they said he likes to throw that two seamer a lot is all of a sudden he's saying, wow, instead of striking hitters out, I can get a ground ball out in one or two pitches. So he's kind of fallen in love with it. And look, some guys have to use a lot of arm action and grunt to get it at 98. Nine. This is natural, yeah. smooth mm -hmm. delivery. Fluid. This is what you can't teach. And this is an arm that is why the hype is the way it is. Threw him a breaking ball on one and two. Effortless power. Look at Carstens. Come on, man. Yeah, that's not fair. You got to remind yourself that it's Carstens and the Pirates who are leading. And somehow he gets a piece of that and prolongs the at bat. You know, when we looked at Steve McCaddy a moment ago, he was part of that Oakland pitching staff in the early 80s where the conventional wisdom is that Billy Martin just pitched McCaddy and Kingman and Langford and Norris and Keough until their arms were hanging limp at their sides. Called strike three. McCaddy, however, defends Martin. Has a different view. He said we all had different, unique injuries, and it wasn't necessarily overwork. But in any case, they're not going to let Strasburg get anywhere near that kind of pitch total now or ever. Jim Riggleman was Kerry Woods' manager in 1998 with the Cubs, when Wood just dazzled the baseball world, had the 20 strikeout game as a rookie. And soon after developed arm problems and Riggleman candidly admitted that he still feels badly about what happened wonders if there were times when he left wood in too long. But you didn't have the same kind of caution even though it was barely more than a decade ago the same kind of caution that prevails now not just with Strasburg but all around baseball when it comes to young pitchers especially. 
Roll it a short. Cedeno backhands, throws off balance, and gets Ian Desmond to start the fifth inning for the Nationals. Yeah, that's a shame that a manager feels that kind of pressure because that's the the pressure that's imposed on managers today. I mean, there's no telling when a pitcher might hurt his arm, but if a manager leaves him in a little too long, he feels guilty about it, and that's so unfair. And I'll tell you, a lot of that has to do, again, with nobody takes into consideration the kid, the guy's mechanics. And Kerry Wood did not have the best mechanics of all pitchers out there. He threw across his body, threw a lot of breaking balls. And, you know, what ended up happening with Kerry Wood was just inevitable in, in, in nature. It had nothing to do with the amount of pitches or the 20 games, the 20 strikeout game. And th that theory, for whatever reason, people are trying to attach that theory and say, this is why we're approaching pitchers today the way we are. Chopper up the middle. Cedeno behind second base takes care of Strasburg. Well, in fact, Wood takes Riggleman off the hook. Wood said, look, I had problems with my elbow even before I got to the big leagues, and it was going to happen sooner or later. Right. Strasburg's mechanics are completely different. Still, Riggleman is a caring guy, and he confesses that he was often torn. He said, if I would take Wood out after he'd thrown 120 pitches, but he's working on a shutout, or he's got 15 strikeouts and a chance for more, the crowd would go nuts. The newspapers would go nuts saying, why didn't you leave him in? So he was always torn between the two decisions. Christian Guzman is 0 for 2. Nice curveball from Karstens for a strike. And he's quickly ahead on the count 0 and 2. Now the difference between Karstens and Steven Strasburg's two seamers obviously is miles per hour. But he relies more on the movement of his pitches in and around the strike zone with curveball. He has to be more accurate than Steven does to be successful because he just doesn't blow the ball by hitters. That is a fair ball and down the line. Guzman on his way to second base. And he'll be there with a two out double. This is the dreaded curveball down and into a left hander, and it just sneaks under the first baseman's glove. He's already pretty close to the line. And again, they gave him a gift in the first inning. Now they give him a gift by taking him off the hook and tying the game up or potentially putting him ahead. Seems likely that Strasburg will throw one more inning. We're in the bottom of the fifth. Morgan's one for two. And the breaking ball gets the corner. Twenty seven year old Jeff Karstens. An afterthought for most people as they approach this game. Ahead of Steven Strasburg at the moment two to one. Karstens went to Texas Tech. I mention that because he just missed the perfect game pitcher Dallas Braden. Karstens last year there was 03. Braden pitched at Texas Tech beginning in 04. No one has ever looked at Jeff Karstens and said, I wonder if someday he'll be in Cooperstown. There are some perhaps getting ahead of themselves who already consider that a foregone conclusion for Steven Strasburg. Breaking ball lined hard but caught by the leaping Walker at second base. So Guzman's two out double goes to waste and after five. It remains 2 1 bucks. In searching for some historical precedents, a Hall of Famer like Juan Marichal made his debut in the major leagues by throwing a one hit shutout in which he struck out 12. A strike to Andrew McCutcheon to start the sixth. On the other hand, his contemporaries like Bob Gibson, Sandy Koufax, 
Jim Palmer later Greg Maddox all debuted quietly and inauspiciously in relief. Look at that curveball drop in there for strike two. As Tom Boswell points out in this morning's Washington Post Roger Clemens ERA through his first six starts was over seven. Down and away. Names like Al Worthington and Carl Spooner on the other hand through back to back shutouts in their first two major league starts. So there are many paths both to stardom and obscurity. There's strikeout number nine. So even though we have cautioned you not to take a single game right. too seriously <laughs> it's hard not to look down the road and think of the upside prospects for this kid. Yeah that's a great change up right there and, and, and John's been talking about his mechanics so chances are this will be Strasburg's last inning let's maybe take a little look at his motion that's a great view of that change up again three pitches he could put you away with. Here's a look from center field. And the guys with good mechanics, John had them, Seaver, they, they pick that front leg up like they're going to knee themselves in the stomach. They don't swing the leg, and then he steps straight toward the hitter. So there's no herky jerky right there. There's where the power comes from. That was his 76th pitch. They're saying the limit is right around 90. The record for most strikeouts in a big league debut is 15. Shared by Carl Spooner of the Dodgers and J.R. Richard of the Houston Astros. The difference, obviously, those were each complete game victories, and Strasburg, who was fan nine, will not get the chance to approach the record. But he will keep putting K's in the scorebook. That's number 10. There's your four seamer, John. Yeah, I, I love that pitch. And I so far I haven't seen him shake off too many times with Pudge. And he went to the fastball and went right upstairs. It just can't explain to the viewer how hard that is for a hitter. He sees the ball come out of his hand. It looks enticing, and then it's way by him before he can even think about holding up. There's a, a look at his motion. The knee comes up. He could probably stand there and hold his balance for a long, long time. He has faced 20 batters. He has struck out half of them. One of the things that we thought was interesting being a right handed power hitter he is on the first base side of the rubber and what that means is typically that's more for sinker ballers who are trying to create the leverage to have the ball go lateral as you look at an unbelievable curveball for a strike. What I always liked as a power pitcher from the right side it was a better angle to a right hander. Yeah. And as you, you can see he would he's got to almost throw this curveball at the right hander and you can see where it stays inside from the other side of the rubber he'd have a better angle for that. But this is probably what he's done since college or at least since he's gotten here and he has delivered pitch after pitch so far and repeated it magically. Andrew McCutcheon himself a number one draft choice or at least a first round choice 11th overall back in 05 just backed out after that last curveball as if to say that is just flat filthy. And he can't stop himself here. They're going to have to throw to first. But if that Leave was Strasburg's in. last inning of work, he concludes with a flourish, striking out the side. McCutcheon, Walker, and Millage in order to take his total to 11. His pitch total is only around 80. They could let him come back out. We'll see. Just walking out of your picture was Steve McCaddy, the pitching coach, after conferring with Jim Riggleman. Ryan Zimmerman, who homered back in the first, leads it off against Karstens and takes a strike. McCaddy told us before the game that he remembered throwing a game with Oakland where he went the distance in a 14 inning contest and threw 207 pitches. That was a different world some 30 years ago. The question is given the way he's throwing, given the standing room only crowd, do they let Steven Strasburg go out for the seventh inning and take him out in the middle of the inning if they have to take him out to a standing ovation. That I part, would that part would be nice but he, I, I can't get my arms around taking out a guy that's pitching like that I, I just hope for his sake somewhere down the road the game changes a lot of pressure on the manager of what to do and the guy's cruising. You know he's faced with the tough challenge of he, he wants to win the game he's managing to win the game but he's also been given some mandates that have been coming from up above and you got to honor those because obviously 
the investment that they're made in these pitchers, but man, it would make my skin crawl. Zimmerman sitting on a 3 1 pitch. Come on back. He thought he had the walk. Strasburg has struck out 11. Meanwhile, Karstens, who has the lead, has fanned no one. <laughs> Zero. He has given the Nationals six hits. The Pirates have four, but Pittsburgh leads it two to one. Fouled off. Non contact night. I mean, Jeff Carson's making him put it in play. All contact night. No walks, no strikeouts. Boy, Steven Strasburg, impressive. He hasn't walked a man. Go gonna, along with those 11 punch outs. He's going to have to work on that ratio, that strikeout yeah. to a walk race. 11 to zip. Well, we're, we're talking so much about pitch counts, and the, it, John and I share the same feeling. You just wonder if the people that are putting those limits have ever told the rubber, or know what it feels like, what your arm feels like. Before they start uh, setting those limits on numbers of pitches and numbers of innings. Maybe they haven't towed the rubber, but they have signed the checks. Yeah, and the checks true. were a whole lot bigger than when you pitched, Kitty. Investment to protect. Base hit for Zimmerman. Boy, Sedinio got a bad jump on that ball. Almost looked like he flinched toward second, little looping liner. <laughs> So Zimmerman's now two for three. See him just a, a half step toward center and then couldn't recover. He gives the uh, Nationals the tying run with nobody out. Right hander Evan Meek is throwing now in the Pirate bullpen. Well to that point I just want to see these theories tested if these teams were happen to get in the playoff chase and some of your best pitchers you're going to have to shut down when they've reached their innings pitch limit and that's going to be only time will tell whether that theory stands the test of time or not. Adam Dunn drives one to deep right way back and the Nationals have the lead. Now how does that affect what you decide to do with Steven Strasburg who stands to be the winner. Unfortunately I think that's going to end the night for him but I hope we're wrong. Hope we're wrong. That ball was absolutely drilled by Adam Dunn. Could hear the crack of the bat all over the ballpark. Even all the way up here in nosebleed territory. In the highest broadcast booth in the nation. And, and you saw Jim Riggleman in your picture. He didn't get caught up in the emotion of the home. See what he's thinking right now. And I can understand it. Like John said, I hope Strasburg goes back out there. But sometimes the way a manager thinks. And I went through this coaching for Pete Rose. He had a rookie Tom Browning who would have a lead late in the game and I said one thing you want to do is take the pitcher out of the game and have him feel good about the job he's done and not send him back out there and then have to take him particularly when he has a chance to win the game. So I think that's what Riggleman is trying to weigh right now. Do we want to take him out when he has a chance to win. Or send him back out there and if something happens you take him in it's kind of a deflated atmosphere. One and two to Willingham. Well, a consideration here. You got the cleanup man, Garrett Jones, to start the seventh, and then Delwyn Young, whose homer represents all of the Pirates' offense off Strasburg, is next. Willingham gets a good piece of this one, and it is gone. Back to back homers from Dunn and Willingham. And Karstens may now be done.
Well, dangerous inside, and that's when he got a breaking ball that hung middle in. Well, Karsten's battled. But a single by Zimmerman, followed by homers from Dunn and Willingham, lead to his exit now trailing four to two. Evan Meek coming in, and we're coming back after this. No one throwing yet in the Nationals' pen, but there's nobody out here, so there's time as Evan Meek comes in to face Ivan Rodriguez, who's two for two, a double and a single. Last foul, 0 and 2. Meek has been very impressive. Anything but Meek out of the bullpen for the Pirates. The record of 3 and 1 is one thing, but look at that ERA 0.83. That leads all major league relievers at this point of the season among those who have thrown as many as 25 innings. And a nice strikeout to walk ratio. And uh, as we were talking during the break, speculating on whether. Strasburg would go back out there the longer this inning lasts and with that uh, extra run would only increase the chances that uh, the Nationals might make a change. Again the rationale could be well we have a two run lead he's had to sit in the dugout for 15 minutes he's almost up to his pitch limit or Riggleman might say look let's send him out there let him face a hitter take him out and get the uh, reaction from the crowd. I like that scenario better. Steve McCaddy the pitching coach. If I'm McCaddy I forget to push the clicker a couple yeah. times what I do. I'm Strasburg <laughs> I grab it and throw it away. Fudge the pitch count. My pitching coach former pitching coach Leo was famous for uh, missing a few clicks on the Leo Mazzoni. Yeah. yeah. Unfortunately nowadays with these uh, high tech scoreboards uh, they've got the number posted all over. Yeah. That's the worst thing. I know it's for the fans but it's the worst thing for a pitcher to happen to turn around and see how many pitches you got in the fourth inning. And now what are you going to do. Yeah. Change take, your whole approach. Take the scoreboard operator out for dinner. On the ground a second. Walker up with it and there's the first out in the national sixth. MLB tonight brings you all of baseball all night long coming up next after this game all the highlights and analysis and some of it I'm guessing will focus on Steven Strasburg just a wild guess. Yeah, If you've done something special around the league don't expect a lot of viewing time on your highlights. No. <laughs> it's going to be very short. Oh by the way he hit four home runs now back to Strasburg. Waiting for the phone to ring down in the Nationals pen. McCaddy's on it. Well, I don't know how uh, he's done tonight. He being uh, Mike Stanton, but another young phenom who was featured on the pregame show as Jim left the bullpen coach. The Marlins have six runs, and Mike Stanton made his major league debut tonight. Power hitting outfielder from the Marlins. Wonder how Armando Galarraga is doing for the Tigers. They should be underway now against the White Sox. First start for Galarraga since the imperfect, perfect game. Not imperfect on his part, obviously. Bernadina is 0 for 2. Ian Desmond, the shortstop, is on deck. With three here in the sixth, the Nationals have taken a 4 2 lead. Ed Rapuano says he didn't commit himself. Drew Storen now has taken a ball and begun to throw in the Nationals bullpen. There is the 22 year old right hander who apparently will follow Strasburg to the mound. The question is exactly when if Strasburg is done now the 11 strikeouts are still the most in a major league debut since Tim Hudson then with the A's had 11 himself in June of 1999. But Strasburg's got 11 through six innings. 
Left center field. Millage and McCutcheon. It'll be Millage. And the other thing that might make uh, Jim Riggleman's decision a little easier as Strasburg got the helmet on comes in the batting circle but they'd uh, probably say if this guy gets on I'm going to pinch hit for you. That would make the decision not only easier but a whole lot a whole lot easier I think for some of the fans to take yeah. that might make sense even to those watching more with their hearts than with their heads. Jammed him. Walker, tough chance from the outfield grass. Nice play. So Meek comes in and settles things down from the Pirate perspective, retiring all three hitters he faces. And we will wait with the rest of you to see if Strasburg comes out for the seventh. Yeah, there's an investment here, and you have to be ultra cautious. But it's also theater, especially tonight. He's thrown 81 pitches. The projected limit was 90. Riggleman and McCaddy would at least let him face one man, maybe more, here in the seventh. The first man is Garrett Jones. The guy on deck, Delwyn Young, reached him for a homer in the fourth. Two hitters. That the signal. And, and in watching some of Stevens' highlights, I, I don't know if you can think back and find any pitcher. That has put away hitters with four different pitches. He struck guys out with his two seam sinker, his high riding fastball, his change, and his curve. In his debut, very impressive. Well, no pun intended, but I'm hope they're hoping that this guy will give this organization a shot in the arm and carry over effect to everybody who follows him. And the people who come and watch the Nationals, there's some excitement in the air. If, and it may seem far fetched, they're in the basement, six back right now. If the Nationals somehow got on the race and it was late September and Strasburg had reached his innings limit, we asked Jim Riggleman what they would do. He said we would probably shut him down. Almost hit him, spins him away, two and two. On the other hand he also said well if we could look that far down the road we might be able to skip a start we might be able to pull him early in a game where we have a lead and save some of those innings for later if 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 we're in the race the 2 2 still throwing 98 here in the seventh I just think it's a defeated mindset to think that you know how many innings a pitcher should have or how many innings he's going to need before his arm injury or this or that. And I just think you let the pitcher and his mechanics and his body tell you where he's at more or less than dictating what it should be. On the breaking ball, Jones goes down swinging, and that is 12. And it's also five in a row and six of the last seven. And that looks like another knee buckling yeah. curveball. That's that Kerry Wood type breaking ball that helped strike out 20. Predominantly right-handed Houston Astros hitters. I, I tell you, it's 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 amusing, and yet it's kind of sad to look down in the dugout. And the big decision here is is pitches and when to take them out. And the guy could probably pitch nine and shut down the rest of the game. A fastball at the knees for a strike to Young, who solved Strasburg for a home run in the fourth. Went down and got a breaking ball, hit it out to right field. Can't catch up with that one. 0 and 2. We're in the seventh inning. It's his first major league start. His velocity has maintained this the entire time. That was the 90th pitch. The 91st is his 13th strikeout. Now. 91 pitches. Boy, and like Riggleman has to decide yeah, oh, do we let him finish the man. inning? <laughs> I don't want to be him going out there to take him out. He's doing the right thing. I applaud him. Struck out, what, six in a row? Yep. And seven of eight. How do you like that one, Mr. LaRoche? 
Did your dad Dave ever throw one like that in his big league career? Actually his dad had a pretty good hook. But not to go with a 100 mile an hour fastball. <laughs> See that's the thing. Justin Verlander who's terrific was throwing 100 miles an hour the other night in the seventh inning himself. Blazing speed is tremendous. But when you mix it with this repertoire and command of all those pitches that's what's close to unique here. And the 0 2. He strikes out the side for the second straight inning. He brings his total to 14. We started the night saying hey it's just one game. Keep it all in perspective. It is difficult to restrain yourself. Unleash all the superlatives. They all seem to apply. Steven Strasburg with a mind boggling 14 strikeouts no walks faced 24 batters struck out 14 of them through seven innings of work and now is done Willie Harris will pinch hit for him in the bottom of the seventh against Evan Meek. Well he answered all the questions I mean I, I was so concerned about being over amped is he going to throw strikes you know, his first two pitches of the game were balls he got right back on target relaxed through all four of his pitches consistently for strikes. Well if Steven Strasburg goes on to have the kind of career he seems to be destined to have then there will be a number of names that fit into the footnote category Jeff Karstens might be one as the losing pitcher tonight possibly. Delwyn Young could be another as the guy who reached him for a home run. Willie Harris could find his name in there as the guy who pinch hit for him as he comes out of the game. Either Drew Storen or Tyler Clippard will be the guy who succeeds him on the mound. They were both throwing in the bullpen. And who is Craig Stammen? He's the guy they optioned to Syracuse when they brought Strasburg to the big club from Syracuse. And I'll tell you what I'm most impressed of. I think the greatest thing that happened to him, this is going to sound horrible coming from a pitcher, was that two run home run. Since that two home run, two run home run, he gave uh, he struck out eight of the next ten guys, seemed to put him back in perspective. You know, to go in and not give up a run is what every dream of a pitcher is, but it really put the perspective back into saying, okay, got to bear down, guy just hit a ball over the fence, here we go. And all he did was respond. These are the type of games. That mean a lot to a pitcher. When you go and dominate and strike out 14 guys and don't give up a run, yeah, you learn, but I think you learn more sometimes by a little bit of adversity, a little bit of toughness coming out of an inning. And, and uh, kudos to him after that home run, striking out eight of the next 10 guys. It's rare these days when the performance exceeds the hype because the hype machine is always so cranked up. Boy, Tonight's performance Man. exceeded the hype. Yeah, I, I had no idea he could put on this kind of performance. Granted, the, the cynics might say, hey, it's the Pittsburgh Pirates and so forth, but for, boy, you cannot imagine for a 21 year old kid with all the attention and the pressure and the advanced hype, as Bob mentioned in the open, uh, the most hyped baseball debut in the history of the game, and to perform like that uh, is pretty special. Another 2 2 pitch to the pinch hitter Willie Harris. And down he goes. Foul tipped it back into Jaramillo's glove. Nationwide, thousands of communities have gotten involved as Chevy and Scotts have set out to rebuild local ballparks. Don't miss your chance to get involved yourself and to win a new Chevy at ChevyBaseball.com. Of course, now the attention shifts for Jim Riggleman to these last two innings because the as impressive a night as this has been so far for the Nationals they have allowed a few games to get away lately in the last two innings. You mentioned that he gets to start against the Pirates no disrespect intended but this is not the most powerful lineup in the major league. His next start could be Sunday at Cleveland in an interleague game. And the Indians have fallen on hard times. But they're all big league hitters. Sedeno behind the bag on the run with the flip for the second out. You know, you mentioned, Jim, all the hype. 
and no one has ever had this kind of anticipation surrounding their big league debut as a pitcher with all the media accompanying it. Dwight Gooden was a sensation back in his early days with the Mets. He opened before a crowd of 18,000 at the Astrodome on the road. Roger Clemens debut believe it or not was before a crowd of 4,000 in the old ballpark the dingy old ballpark in Cleveland. Tom Seaver debuted in April of 67 before a crowd of 5,000 at Shea Stadium. And none of those guys were unknown when they broke in. They were all much ballyhooed. Randy Johnson, 10,000 in Montreal for his first start. LaRoche is in close and in just the right spot to retire Morgan and make it a 1 2 3, bottom of the seventh. Strasburg is done and so too is a lot of the theater but it's still a close ball game as we move to the eighth as Tyler Clippard comes in to work the eighth Jim Riggleman kind enough to join us from the dugout you knew that he was good you'd seen him you had all the reports but even you had to be taken aback by what you saw tonight yeah it was really special uh, you know uh, Pittsburgh is battling making work hard and Carson's was keeping them in the ball game and you know we got a heck of a game going here in front of this great crowd it's a it's a great night a really electric but he was he was the show so far you know it was just uh, a great night for Steven a great night for the Nationals you had a decision to make after six what was the conversation like in the dugout well you know Stephen Kenny and I were, were talking and uh, it, it just it, it just felt like it at 81 pitches he, he can go out there and give us 10 12 more pitches and we'll see where it's at and it the cleaner the hitters uh, that he went through with three and four pitches only he he kind of um, made that decision OK but uh, we were really going to be topping out at uh, at ninety five and uh, you know if it went a little further it went a little further but uh, uh, you know he finished up strong it was, a, it was a great night for him you guys are longtime baseball men and sometimes you can you know get a little bit cynical if that's the right word or maybe skeptical but there has to be a wow factor with this kid no matter how long you've been around the game no question uh, you know when you see guys like this come along it's really special and uh, uh, you know it, he's humble he's uh, just really a guy that uh, as a national we're all proud of and uh, hopefully we can keep him healthy and let him keep going Jim thanks very much thank you all right so Cedeno opened the eighth with an opposite field single Jaramillo is the hitter. Popped foul and it'll make the seats. Ryan Church is on deck to pinch hit. Can I tell you now one of his greatest challenges being Steven and the organization is managing now is in between requirements and requests and all the things that go about being a, a star in the league because every single person wherever he goes is going to want an interview going to want his time and if he can manage that and do what he can it, it'll it'll bode well for him and his career as he moves forwards trying to learn every time out learn something more. I got to tell you Bob I fell prey to all of those requests after my first start I won at Shea Stadium. I just about did every request that was asked. We went to San Diego and they got me with Mr. Bear interview and it happened to be the San Diego Zoo. They put the request on my chair, went right to the phone like I was supposed to, called up, I reached the zoo and everybody started laughing. <laughs> and what my, was the line of questioning pursued by Mr. Bear? My problem was I waited longer than I should have when I realized it was the <laughs> yeah. zoo. Amidst all this, the tying run is at the plate. Uh, now Clippard, another Yankee uh, cast off, similar to Carson's, who's done a good job here for the Nationals, just to amplify what John said. That's an old clubhouse trick. You come in and you've pitched a good game. You see a message on your stool that says call Mr. G. Raff and they leave the number and it's G. <laughs> Raff or Mr. Bear and it's the it's the Chicago Zoo. <laughs> they get you once but that's Stop enough. you're <laughs> killing me. Sedano yeah. away from first. And the 2-2 two -two to Jaramillo. Down he goes. And now Ryan Church as the pinch hitter. First to look back between innings 
a curtain call for Steven Strasburg. Fourteen strikeouts in a seven inning debut. Smoltzy, you threw hard, intimidated a lot of hitters. Your career high was 15 twice. Jim, you were a different kind of pitcher. Your career high was 13. This wow. kid out of the chute, 14 in seven innings. I would have guessed 13 would have been a total for three games for me. That incidentally is a Nationals 